My name is Rashonda Harris Allen, and I will be serving as your mistress of ceremony for tonight's occasion. As your mistress of ceremony, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all here for the 2022 athletic fundraiser from the classroom to the court. Let me say that again from the classroom to the court. And we're here today to honor the one and only Miss Norma J. Williams. We are so excited to have you here with us. And I also want to let you all know, this is an annual fundraising event. So that means you all have to come back again next year, because it's an annual. Annual means every year. For more than 150 years, Tulu College continues to thrive on the pillars of academic excellence and social responsibility. Tonight, we celebrate and honor Tulu College alumna, Professor Norma J. Williams. Our theme echoes the leadership and powers over our honoree as an advocate, coach, educator, administrator, and most deserving distinguished athletic trailblazer. If you have not already, please read Mrs. Williams' biography and note the many accomplishments she has made in the field of higher education and paths she has blazed in sports. Notably, in 1985, she was being named the first, and I'm going to say this again, the first female athletic director at Tougaloo College. This made her the first female athletic director of men's and women's athletics in the state of Mississippi. In 1986, she was named the head women's basketball coach at Tougaloo College. This year, the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, NAIA, is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Tougaloo College is honoring and celebrating the legacy of Professor Williams. Her accomplishments from the classroom to the court as a champion and advocate for women in sports. Please help me celebrate our honoree, Professor Norma J. Williams. Good evening. Hallelujah. How wonderful it is to come and celebrate another woman who is leading and continues to mentor and guide us in her example. I invite us to pause for a moment as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Holy God, we give thanks for you. As we invite you, God, to be present with us and to saturate us, we give thanks for the opportunity this day to celebrate the goodness that you have placed and that you have used Dr. Mrs. Williams to channel into so many lives. As we give thanks for her, God, we also give thanks for the work you do at Tougaloo College, for our leaders and all of those, God, who serve. We invite your Holy Spirit to touch us tonight and to gather us close together as eagles, God, who lift up one particular eagle and we ask, God, that you would be missed in the midst of us, God. As we think about the blessings of food and fellowship, bless what we have before us tonight, that it would strengthen us physically. But also, God, remind us throughout the night as we hear testimony after testimony that every runner runs the race in such a way to win the prize. We give thanks for the prize of Norma Williams. And we give thanks this evening, God, for every life that she has touched and is yet touching through the generations of educators who follow her. Be with us in a very real way and bless all that we say and do tonight because it is for your glory that we run this race before us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Bowden. Let us now prepare to hear greetings from 2022-2023 College Student Government Association, President Ms. Natalie Hampton, who will bring greetings on behalf of the student body. Ms. Adrian Hughes, 
Senior Administrative Assistant of the Owens Health and Wellness Center will bring greetings on behalf of the Department of Athletics. And Ms. Jana Williams, serving as the president, will deliver greeting on behalf of the Tougaloo College Athletic Booster Club. To the Tougaloo College Board of Trustees, President Carmen J. Walters, administrators, faculty, staff, peers, and especially our esteemed honoree, Ms. Norma J. Williams, good evening and welcome to the 2022 Athletic Fundraiser. I am Natalie R. Hampton, a senior biology major from Clinton, Mississippi, and I am humbled to serve as the 90th Student Government Association President. It is an honor to stand before you, before Ms. Norma J. Williams, a Tougaloo College alumna and trailblazer in women's sports, who was instrumental in fighting for gender equality at a pivotal time in the evolution of sports. I am grateful for women like our honoree who came before me and left an indelible mark from the court to the classroom. Please enjoy tonight's celebration. We are Tougaloo proud. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Ms. Williams. I miss you. I haven't seen you so long. <laughs> Good evening. On behalf of the Tougaloo College Department of Athletics, I want to welcome you to the 2022 Athletics Fundraiser. As a former colleague and a student, I am more than grateful to welcome to you all an honor and a phenomenal woman like Ms. Williams. Ms. Williams' dedication in the classroom and on the court has paved the way for so many educators, coaches, and professional students, including myself. Her commitment and excellence simply changed lives forever. Thank you, Ms. Williams for over 50 years of dedication and service to Tulu College. Thank you. As your Tougaloo College Athletic Booster Club president, it is my honor to welcome you to the 2022 Athletic Fundraiser. It is so refreshing to see so many familiar faces as well as new faces to reflect and celebrate the legacy and so many achievements of the Norma J. Williams. I would like to thank the President, President Walters and her staff, Athletic Department, the Board of Trustees, Boosters, Mrs. Williams and her family, and everyone who helped make this night possible, as well as each and every one of you for taking your time to be here tonight. Tonight is a special occasion as we pay tribute to one of the many trailblazers who helped build the foundation that many of us stand on today. Norma Williams helped set the stage for the sea of change and progress. She has been a pillar for equal opportunities in education while aspiring her students, players, and women like me to succeed in the classroom, on the court, and in life. Without her fierce dedication and the implementation of Title IX, there is a chance many of the women in the room will not be standing here today leading. So on behalf of the Tougaloo College Athletic Booster Club, thank you, Norma Williams, for making a difference and in influencing many generations to come. Because of the roots you planted, students, athletes, and women like me can thrive. You deserve your flowers and you deserve to shine. Let's remember to be all in like Mrs. Williams. Thank you again for being here tonight, and welcome, welcome, welcome. They do um, remind us that Miss Williams is from, what did they say? What was it? From the what to the what? From the classroom to the court, all three speeches truly, truly helped me to remember that from the classroom to the court. And see, I didn't know Miss Williams on the court. I only knew her in the classroom, but I heard about her on the court. <laughs> so please, let's give our ladies a round of applause that came up here and gave those kind words. Rose this evening to definitely thank you all for joining us this evening. 
as well, and we're just so excited to be here and have you here to help us celebrate Mrs. Norma J. Williams, who I have become so very closely acquainted with during this process, and I feel like we're kindred spirits, and so I look forward to continuing our conversations and our calls as well, Professor Williams, so thank you so much for all you have been doing to help embody a wonderful spirit in me as, as the uh, as an employee of Tougaloo College. So I'm deeply inspired by your work, your accomplishments, and all that you continue to do and touch with us at Tougaloo College. So thank you, Ms. Williams. I also rose to thank, yes, thank <laughs> I also rose to express a special thank you to our sponsors for their generosity. Uh, our competitor sponsor, who is Mrs. Norma J. Williams. Let's give her a round of applause for serving as a sponsor. Our collegiate sponsors, the Central Mississippi Health Services Incorporated, Mr. Joseph Joe Davis, Mrs. Shirley J. Starkey, Mrs. Mary Hales Cox, our own President Carmen J. Walters, the Tougaloo College Athletic Booster Club, and the Tougaloo College Alumni Association. Let's give all of our sponsors a round of applause. And a special thank you to our silent auction donors. And just please know that all of the proceeds from the sponsorships, the tickets, the silent auction, all will benefit the athletic programs and scholarships of our women's sports and cheer team for our students at Tougaloo College. Now that's a round of applause. Now this is an opportunity where you know, my pastor used to say, this is where we all can participate. So our sponsors we know have given so generously to help ensure that we had opportunities for others to be in the room. But if you have not given and would like to donate to this event, as I just shared, the proceeds will go to our athletics department for our athletic sports and cheer in terms of programming and scholarships. Uh, but this is the opportunity. If you're a guest of someone, here's the opportunity to say, hey, I love to donate to this event as well, this fundraiser in honor of Mrs. Uh, Norma J. Williams. This is an opportunity for you to give as well. Now, there are three ways you can give. You can give a check or a credit card. You can pull out your phone, and you can just text Norma, N-O-R-M-A, N-O-R-M-A, text Norma to 41444, and you can give it the comfort of your seat. And also, the, as you see on the screen, this, the uh, QR code for those of the, you know, the, the young people in the room, you know, we love those QR codes. I'm learning to be more engaged with the digital side. You can, you can aim your phone, push your phone up to this, uh, the QR code, and it will take you directly to a giving link where you can give to the 2022 Athletic Fundraiser in honor of, of course, I, I say Professor Williams, uh, Professor Norma J. Williams. So thank you all so much for being here tonight. Every gift will help make a difference in the, and help students have a Tougaloo College education. You're making it possible and you're making a difference in the lives of our students. Thank you again and continue to enjoy this wonderful program and this outstanding evening. Thank you. Ms. Norma Williams, you have impacted the lives of many students here over a 50-year career in higher education, and athletes, many of whom you nurtured, coached, and mentored. And I'm going to throw a, a, just a little tiny plug in there. I did not attend to Glue College, but she mentored me from the first day I walked in as a faculty member. And I thank you dearly for that, Ms. Williams. Tonight, we will hear from just a few sharing their congratulate congratulatory tribute to Ms. Williams. First, Ms. Williams' daughter and Tougaloo College alumnus, Mrs. Tina Powell. Ms. Jennifer Joseph Anderson cannot be here tonight. 
and Tulu College alumnus and former student Ms. Pearl Pennington has graciously agreed to share a congratulatory tribute. And Ms. Kanika Collins Sharp, Tougaloo College alumnus and former coach. Please help me welcome them to the stage. My mother is called by many names. Norma Williams, Norma, Miss Williams, Professor Williams, mother, grandma, and great-grandma. Some of you may even know her by Boo Jones, but I just call her Ma. It gives me great pride to attach the following words behind her name. Norma Williams, passionate, focused, committed, courageous, an advocate, transformer, and trailblazer. Good evening. My name is Tina Powell and I'm the oldest daughter of Norma Williams. My mother has dedicated over 52 years of her life to Tougaloo College, her students and athletes. She loves this school. One thing I do know and can say without a shadow of a doubt, she loves her students. And actually, during your time at Tougaloo College, you were her, her children. I'm sure there are many stories that you all have about my mom and your experiences. Wolf, Keith Palmer, Daphne, Joe Davis, so many of you all. This is a phenomenal way to tribute my mother by having her be the face of this year's athletic fundraising event that would benefit Tougaloo College's women's athletics program and scholarships. My mom has always wanted to be a physical education instructor. Her belief in the importance of being physically active, she not only wanted to just teach college students the importance of knowing about physical activity, but she also wanted to promote physical activity and general health awareness to children between the ages of 10, 8, and 18 through various sports at Tougaloo College. One of them was the National Youth Sports Program. This program exposed many children who did not have an opportunity to learn sports uh, activities such as tennis, track and field, basketball, dance, karate, swimming. She used to have enrichment programs that she would bring in experts and they would talk about the body or drugs or the police would talk about how you should act in school or staying out of trouble. I think one of the most um, fun moments during the NYSP programs was when Jackson State's NYSP program would come to the college and they would play in a basketball game. And you'd have 500 children in a gym, no air conditioning, including faculty, and everybody else that wanted to squeeze in cheering them on. So those were probably one of the best times. Also at the program, they would have an exhibition day. And during that time, the kids could show what they learned during the year. But we would have a, a trip to the reservoir at the um, end of the program and also an awards day. And my mom made sure you dressed for awards day. When my mom started her journey at Tougaloo College, she never imagined she could accomplish all the things she, that she did. But because of her tenacity, and her trust in the Lord. She was named Woman's Heads Basketball Coach, Department Chair of the Health, Physical Education and Recreation Department, and Director of Men's and Women's Intramural Sports. She also served on several committees, such as the Academic Dean's Council, Student Life Committee, and Judiciary Committee, just to name a few. My mother has always been an amazing person to me. I did not have to look outside of the house for someone to look up to. My mom was my superhero. She would work all day, come home, take care of her family, cook dinner, help me and my sister with homework, attend our school activities, grade papers, do lesson plans, and start all over again the next day. I used to wonder if she slept. I have had to share my mom with her suitors all my life. It never bothered me. As long as I was with my mother, 
that was all that mattered to me. I started going to I, I started going to work with my mom when I was a little girl. I was like her shadow. We would eat every day at Warren Hall. And every now and then, she'd let me get a treat from the co-op. I would run around the campus with other faculty members' children, like Georgia Dawkins and Frankie Woods, Miss Honeysuckle's daughter, Coach Jerry Lewis and Coach James Coleman's son, Lil Jerry and Jimmy would be there. We'd be everywhere. We would go to Joyner's mom's office, which was at the president's office in the mansion. We would go to Jameson Hall, be at Dr. Wood's office. We would climb the hill by the computer lab and mailroom and read books in the third floor library. And when my mom went to meetings, what I, I would either go to the library and sit in Miss Charlene Cole's office or stay with some of her students. When she would teach her aerobics and dance classes or teach basketball and volleyball in the gym, I would sit on the stage and just watch her. She would tell me, you would sit on this stage, and I'd say one word. <laughs> in November 1984, my senior year in high school, my mother had an aneurysm on Thanksgiving night. She had a stroke the early part of the next month. She had to learn to read, write, walk, feed herself, put on her clothes. Her doctor said she would never recover. She would always remain the same. But my dad, my dad said he wasn't having it. He said, we got work to do. So we rolled up our sleeves. I took on my mom's role. He didn't have to ask. And we got to work. My dad worked at night. I would cook breakfast and get my mom dressed every morning before me and my sister went to school. My dad would take my mom to speech therapy and physical therapy every day. My mother was like a two-year-old child. She had to learn the letters of the alphabet. We would read to her, help her write, and pronounce her words. My dad would walk her around in the house, then up and down the street. Then eventually, they would walk at the track at Brinkley Middle School. This was a life-changing event for us all, but we never gave up on her. All I can say is, but God, my mother had an amazing recovery in a record amount of time. Her doctors even said it was a miracle. Here was a lady that was told she would never recover from having a stroke. And in a year's time after her stroke was named athletic director in 1985 by the then president of Tougaloo College, President Herman Blake. That shows you. That shows you how much confidence he had in her. She was the first female African American to serve as athletic director of men and women's sports in the state of Mississippi during a male dominating time. And might I add, yes, she did. Title IX of the Education Amendment of 1972 was enacted by Congress and signed into law by President Richard Nixon prohibited sex discrimination in any educational program or activity receiving any type of federal financial aid. What Title IX meant for women was it gave women athletes the right to equal opportunity in sports and educational institutions that receive federal funds from elementary schools to colleges and universities. While my mom was athletic director, she had to make sure Title IX was being used properly in women's sports at Tougaloo College. So as, for you, as you can see, my mother truly is what the flyer says, from the classroom to the court, blazing the trail in women's sports. I will end with this. Proverbs 31, 26, 30 says, she speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She teaches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Thank you for giving my mother her flowers while she is still alive. And thank you for allowing me
And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share this amazing event with such a remarkable woman, my mother, Norma J. Williams. I am Pearl Strickland Pennington. I am the class of 1983. I am a proud eagle. Miss Williams, well done. Over the years, I've told my children stories, and Tina, you are correct, we all have stories. And you may or may not remember this, but my first paper, you said Strickland? I'm going to need you to stay after class. OK, that means I'm in trouble. So I stay after class, and you said, do you see this writing, this little chicken scratch? I am not going to go blind reading this or trying to read this. So this time and this time only, I will allow you, I will allow you to read it to me. You still deducted 10 points from my perfect paper. But after that, I, I, I completely changed my penmanship, Ms. Williams. I do appreciate that. Because I realized that what I thought was cute was really unreadable, but it was cute to me. But I also am very disappointed. I thought I was your favorite. Joe Davis. <laughs> but then I find out all of these wonderful stories. So those accidental bumping on, on the yard, they were deliberate. I know that now. Uh, telling me my shorts were too short. I know that now. <laughs> but I want you to know that the four years that I was there, you were my touchstone. In a male-dominated world, you were that female. And you would seek me out sometimes just to say, don't do that anymore. Or maybe you should consider this. I also want you to know how grateful I am. You know, I was a little country girl from Pachuta, Mississippi, lost like a deer in the headlights. But you allowed me to watch you maneuver. You allowed me to engage with you, be it accidentally or deliberately. You allowed me into your world. And I want to say thank you. I want to say how grateful I am. Even when the word mentor was not as important as it is now, you were that. A lot of, I've, I've spoken to a lot of my former teammates, and basically, like I said, I thought I was special, but I wasn't. But you were also that, the same for them. You were that voice in the darkness. And you know, I spiral a lot. You, you do remember that, right? <laughs> but you were always there to pull me back, and I do appreciate that. And I want to say today, today is well-deserved. It is an honor to be here. It is an honor to be on this stage and say, thank you. Well done, Ms. Williams. And I know the generations to follow will miss that. I know they will because every story that I tell about Tougaloo involves Ms. Williams to my children. So I say again, thank you and well done. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kanika Collins Sharp, and I am an educator here in Raleigh, North Carolina. But most importantly, I am a proud Tougaloo College graduate. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of Mrs. Williams. Mrs. Williams, you are a true treasure to the Tougaloo College family. Since our first encounter back in 1996, I've had the deepest and sincerest respect and admiration for you as an educator, mentor, and as my soror. Ms. Williams, you have touched the lives of so many young men and women. And for all that you have done and continue to do, Ms. Williams, I thank you. We all thank you and we all love you. No one is more deserving of this award, Ms. Williams. 
and we are very proud of you. We love you. Congratulations. Mom, this was just a little something just to tell you how much we love you as a family. Um, you are our trailblazer. I truly felt the dedication Miss Norma Williams had to Tougaloo College during those presentations. And I'm actually excited that Miss Williams can sit here today and enjoy this because normally she's the one with the camera taking pictures of everybody and everything. So thank you, Miss Williams, for trusting others to come and take pictures of you while you enjoy this moment. Miss Williams' leadership and legacy has made a remarkable and monumental contribution to education and sports at Tougaloo College and beyond. Tonight, we are privileged to view the release of the debut of her documentary, From the Classroom to the Court, Norma J. Williams, Blazing the Trail in Women's Sports. Williams' influence on students was so profound. You know, if, if, if you were in her, one of her classes and you didn't show up, she would go get you. Not only would she go get you, she would give you a sermon and tell you how wrong you were all the way back to class. That was one of the reasons. I, I've heard people talk about someone keeping you on track for what you want to do. Ms. Williams actually put me on track to do what I want to do, and then she helped keep me on track. Ms. Williams' role here at Tugu uh, has impacted me greatly. Uh, not only me, but many, many others across the country and even the world. Uh, you see, Title IX uh, is an education limit that was put in place in 1972 uh, that prohibited any sexual discrimination uh, for any uh, educational program uh, or activity receiving any federal assistance. Um, Ms. Williams was a pioneer in that, that particular movement. Uh, not only was she the first um, African-American director of athletics in the state of Mississippi, but she was also the first director of athletics here at the uh, first female. So she's a trailblazer. She has really uh, affected me greatly. And I will add that she was also my uh, teacher at some point here at Tupac. Norma always talked about, oh, she was not always, well, occasionally she, she would mention some of her students. One of her students that uh, name that would come up on occasion was Joe Davis. And I'm sure you'll be talking about her. Uh, Joe was interested in going in an area that there are a few African Americans What's going into. And I do believe that Joe and Miss Williams had a number of conversations about that. If I'm wrong, he'll tell you that when you hear the But she was always pushing students, pushing them beyond their what they thought was their capacity. When, when I came to Tulu, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do had had some background out of high school, working as a student athletic trainer and or as a manager, and wasn't really sure how that would lead to a career. At that time, I, I, I didn't even know it could be a career. But through research and working with Ms. Williams and other people, uh, kind of found out some things that, hey, this, this is something you're actually interested in. Uh, you, you, you 
kind of good at it because I had the high school background experience. You, you can, you know, reach out to other people that do this and, and, and lead to that. And that, that's where I'll, I'll say Miss Williams really became a, a, a serious influence for me. So my grandmother was in fact strict at home as well. Grandma don't talk about me later, okay? But you were, but if you were not that way, no telling where I would be right now. You actually set a guideline and you stuck by that guideline and those principles. And that's everything in the world. You gotta have that. As you see today, there are a lot of misguided people and I feel like you directed me in that correct path because now I pour into others the same way you poured into me, the same way you poured into your students. I have done a lot of things and taken a lot of your roles. The strictness, some may see it as strict, but it was our culture. I really believe that's how we grew up, but that's what made us who we are today. When I first came to Tuguru, there were girls who had never played um, never performed in a physical education class. If they were on the, the rain jets, uh, they, they played uh, volleyball, or uh, they played tennis, they didn't have to take physical education. Well, now you have them playing the sport, and uh, there are a lot of people who can play the sport. So. There are times when we have to sort of dismiss or we have to have a, a, a certain number of people that are able to play the sport. And then we, after you play the sport, you got to get the equipment, you got to get the uh, uh, clothing, you have to get all of it. And it's very, very important. I would hope that all of the people realize uh, 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 some of the things that athletics do. They make a kid smart, and I say smarter, you know that the kid has to have a certain average in order to play. But as he gets ready for that average, he learns how to write, he learns how to read, he's doing all of the things that will help him to raise his average up. The physical, the, the, the athlete is also physically fit. He can perform in a 40 minute game. So he's physically fit. Now, these athletes have friends and these friends are influenced by these athletes. So in some cases, let's just go back to phys ed. In some cases where you have a physical education uh, major, who is also a basketball player, and you allow that major, because he can play that bounce of basketball level, then you allow him to take a part of your class and be a part of your class. So his friends will learn what he's doing, and then they can understand why he has to be physically fit, and physically fit not only helps, the fifth the uh, basketball team, it helped those kids in my class too. She would not let you slide by. Case in point, when my daughter was uh, was in one of her walking classes, and I think it was uh, physical activities, walking, I happened to have been the you know, activity they were in. Medisa wanted to walk, couldn't. But she wanted to, period. And Ms. Williams told her, you know, you do what you can, but don't do too much. She understood that uh, Medisa was going through a time and that too much physical activity would not be good for her. Because she was still, as I said earlier, doing radiation and chemo and classes and getting the work done and so forth. Ms. Williams, influence our daughter to the point where she thought she could not only succeed, but she did succeed. To the point that after she graduated, she was inspired to go on to Jackson State to do a master's degree in public, uh, public health. Who would have thought? All goes back to normal limits. 
who became her advisor during the city of her city thesis. Here's a student who's trying to put a paper together, who has some limitations because of the surgery. But Ms. Williams would not let that limitation stand in the way of her achieving her goal, finishing that senior thesis paper, and she did it. Some of the things that uh, come to mind when I think about uh, Professor Williams as my instructor here at Toulouse many years ago, we won't say how many, um, <laughs> But she was stern, no nonsense. Um, you know, we are phrasing her her legacy from the classroom to the court. Um, she made sure that you understood that you were here for classwork first. She didn't. Uh, there was no 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 questions about it. You were gonna get your lesson. You did get your lesson. You you couldn't be in Ms. Williams' class. As a matter of fact, I, I distinctly remember a couple of my classmates being late for class and she told them, you well, might as well go back to wherever you were, because you're late. And we don't start this class late, you need to be on time, and you need to be prepared and ready to work. So as a very, as a freshman, a very early age in my life, I saw this woman who was just very dominant and in her classroom, but she did not take any any, any, anything less than, than perfection. You know, Ms. Williams had class rules in terms of attendance, uh, behavior, and even dress in her class that coming to college, I didn't think I, I, I would see any more of that once I left high school. Because what I was told, you know, you go to college, you know, professors don't care. They got theirs, you got to get yours, you paying them, they're going to get their check anyway. What well, was I wrong when I met Ms. Williams? Or, or was that information wrong? that was given to me in this way. And I am ever so grateful for her being who and what she what she was. Uh, Chap talked about if you didn't show up to class, she would either come looking for you. Uh, in my case, she didn't come looking for me. She would, she would call the dorm and or would call security and would have them find you and, and have you come to class. You know, as I said earlier, the flip side of that, if you were late for class, she would lock the door and wouldn't let you in. You know, me being the fun, jovial kind of guy that I was trying to be. And I, I said, Ms. Williams, you, you have me confused. You know, if, if I'm late for class, you don't let me in. If I don't come, you send for me. I, I, I don't know what you want to do. She looks me straight in the eyes, and she always referred to everybody as Mr. and Mrs. She said, Mr. Davis, I'm preparing you for what's going to happen in your life outside of these gates. What you don't understand is I'm doing some things for you that your bosses and or your employment places aren't going to do. If you're late for work, they're going to dock your check. Your money going to be short. If you don't show up, son, you're not going to be paid. You know, th those things didn't mean very much to me then, but later on in life, kind of like things your parents tell you that don't make sense, or other people tell you, all of a sudden you're in a situation where that, that light or that bell goes ding, and, 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 and there you are. You know, we, we, I, I talked about uh, classroom discipline and, and, and or dress code. You, you weren't going to come to her class any kind of way. See, I, I wore caps a lot. I, I probably don't wear caps now because of this week. Because, you know, she would either put, you know, she would put me out of class. One day I refused to leave class. I said, I'm not leaving. I'm paying my tuition. I'm here to learn. I'm here to get my class. She said, yeah, but I had rules. I wouldn't leave. She moved the class to another classroom and wouldn't let me in. Who women were allowed to play, then and men were. That meant that there was no place for women, not not even in in, in teaching the women to play. But after Title IX was play was uh, mandated, that meant that we had to include women. Now, if you were talking about how do you support women. Uh, you have to understand one thing. Women have to have scholarships. Women need to have a place to stay. Women do need to have a good coach. Women need to have a good uh, uh, equipment. You say, why have an athletic program? 
it is very important that you have an athlete, an athletic program. And yes, there should be women in that program. Number one, when they lose or win a game, they have to learn how to cope. They have to learn that I lost and why did I lose? And I won and why did I win? And on the next game, which isn't too far away, you have to play another game. And you have to win or lose that game. And you have to make that decision. Current influence on students, a lot of students who've gone on to earn graduate degrees. Part of that story is, if they graduated from Tougaloo in the Department of Education, part of that story is going to be about this Morgan Williams and help them get to that point to achieve with what they were able to accomplish. I'm so appreciative to her for things that were done. Also, now I am really appreciative to Two Blue College for putting this event together for Ms. Williams. I, you know, I, I'm partial, of course, because of my relationship with Ms. Williams. But, you know, for the 45 plus years, from, from a student when I came here in the summer of, uh, 1977 till I graduated in, in 1982 and and all the years that I've stayed in contact with Tugu during the time that I've, that I've been away I don't think there have been not very many but not many people what I would say are iconic figures on this campus you know the progress that Professor Norma Williams has made uh, for women in sports is second to none. All of the young ladies who played ball at Tougaloo, you know, a ball in my hand is just a ball, but a ball in their hand was their way up, their way out. And Norma offered them that opportunity. So today we continue the legacy with our women's sports in basketball and volleyball and cross country, in soccer, in cheer and dance. We continue the legacy by offering the programs that support athletics. We talk to our faculty staff all the time to say, Tougaloo has two A's, athletics and academics. And Norma was a part of both, from the court to the classroom. We continue that legacy today and we're excited to celebrate her tonight for her legacy. When I was in high school, I had a high school coach named uh, Coach Hensley. And for some reason, he would place a lot of emphasis on female athletes because he came in and coached females. There was another coach uh, with the guy. But all of the things that he did, I could remember, and I made up my mind at that particular time that I was going to be a physical education teacher. Now, I didn't think about being an athletic director. I just thought about being a uh, physical education teacher and maybe teaching kids to uh, uh, play basketball. But. At that time, uh, at the time that I came to Tougaloo, there was no basketball for me. So I didn't have a chance to play. And when I took a job at Tougaloo, uh, there was no basketball for me. But as time passed by, then uh, Time 9 came in. And right before Time 9 came in, uh, the athletic director at that particular time decided that we would have women our women's basketball team. I think of the significance of Title IX. I think for women, Title IX not only opened the door for sports, but it opened the door for leadership. Um, some women who were marginalized, not recognized for their sporting ability, once Title IX came into being, were able to really rise and continue the fight so that women today can be recognized as icons. And 
So Norma was in that fight and talked to her students about how important it was for women to be recognized in sports, therefore being leaders. And so we want to continue that legacy. We want students to understand that they have to be advocates for women as leaders. They have to be advocates for young men to stand up and support women in leadership roles and to see the importance of women in sports and how that translates into the world of work with team building and leadership and guidance and making sure that others are respected for their gift and their, their talents. And so this is an exciting time for us 50 years later with Title IX to celebrate Norma. What a way to celebrate with the life of Norma Williams. Miss Norma Williams, you are truly a trailblazer. From the classroom to the court, you are the first of many. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be standing here as a coach today at Tougaloo College. So I thank you and I appreciate everything you have done in the Department of Athletics and in the Department of Academics. Like our president said, we have two A's. We have athletics and we have academics. And you have proven that to be right. So thank you. At this time, I would like to invite Tougaloo College Athletic Director, Mr. Keith Barnes, followed by former students of Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Willie Pearl Pennington, and Mr. Joe Davis to make presentations. Tonight, we're here to honor Ms. Norma J. Williams, not only for her achievement in the classroom, uh, and, uh, in her career and sports, but also her commitment to Tougaloo College for the many years she has served. I'm going to ask Ms. Williams to come to the podium, along with our president, President Walters. Ms. Williams, on behalf of Tougaloo College, we'd like to present these awards, honoring you for your outstanding service to the college. And congratulations to you for blazing a trail in women's sports. First, we have a rendering of a patch that every athlete at Tougaloo will wear this year not only recognizing Norma J. Williams, but also um, the 50th year of Title IX. All right? This is what it will look like. We have the uniform of which the patch is placed, will be placed there, and um, each of the different athletic teams will have this patch. All right, so this is yours. I am told that she really likes this photo. <laughs> so now she doesn't have to search for it. She can hang it and look at it over.
Last but not least, how do we say thank you? Very hard to do. Over the years, the many things that you've done, the sacrifices that you made, I saw those sacrifices. You did a lot for me, Joe, Pearl, everybody that has spoken, speak the same language. You're that person. On behalf of the athletic department at Tougaloo, thank you. Coach is pretty tall, even with my high heels. <laughs> Miss Norma, what a what a night. Let's give her another round of applause. And we're not going to keep you standing long. I'm going to make remarks later, but I want to announce this very last gift uh, for Miss Norma Williams. In our Owens Athletic Facility, there is a very nice conference room that we don't let anybody use. It's preserved. Before tonight, it was for the president of the college. But today, it is the Norma J. Williams Conference Room. We're going to celebrate the unveiling of that room in the spring when we celebrate our basketball team's championship. We're going to give them their rings, and then we're going to unveil her conference room. Give her a round of applause. I'm Joe Davis. You, you saw me on the video and stuff like that. And, you know, I'll, I'm one of her former students. As I said in the video, uh, I arrived at Tougaloo in 1977. I left in 82. If your math is a little bit correct, you know, that's, that, that's an extra year. I, I don't remember if I had an extra freshman year or extra senior year. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, I, I, I enjoyed it. But if it wasn't for Ms. Williams, it probably would have been 1977 with the infinity sign out to the end because I, I probably would have never matriculated out, out of Tougaloo. Uh, Ms. Williams, I, I have uh, two presentations here for you. Uh, this is basically coming from many of your former students. When, when I found out that you had retired, you know, the wheels started turning, that, that we need to figure out a way to do something to honor and show our respect for Ms. Williams. And this is, is a culmination of that uh, tonight. And I appreciate all of you coming all out as, as well. Uh, first, you know, when we think about honoring people and, and doing things, I'm, I'm so honored to be able to stand here and look at you and out at these people here as opposed to being honoring you, looking down on you. So th this is our blessing to be able to be here and honor you with that. Uh, with that being said, uh, Pearl has a box of dozen roses here. Uh, we wanted to give you your roses, as they say, while you can smell them and appreciate the beauty. So there, there's a dozen roses there. Uh, the, the other thing, we, when we were trying to figure out what, what, what could we do, we, we understand this was a Tougaloo women's athletic fundraising event, but we really wanted to do something special for you. So we kept knocking things around. I reached out to your daughters, reached out to your granddaughters. What, what we were really trying to do, sorry. Uh, the, the first thing came out, we, we wanted to, you know, Mr. Roscoe, we, we, we Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Roscoe, we, we, we're happy you're here. Uh, for many of us, we, we've seen you now for sure, and I met you a little bit earlier. 
we, we, we realize that you're not a myth. We, <laughs> we, we, we heard a lot about you during, during our days at, at Tugu, but we, we never got the opportunity to meet you. But I did get to meet you later. We would like to thank you for sharing your wife with us and the many Tougaloo people. Yeah. You know, again, we were trying to figure out what we could do, not just for Ms. Williams, but also in appreciation for you sharing your wife. You know, we talked about cruises, we talked about flights, different places, different things, and from talking to, you, you, you can blame it on them if it's not true. Uh, your grandkids and your kids were saying that you, you probably wouldn't be interested now because of COVID and some other things and traveling and stuff like that, which we all understand. So what we did, we actually, I got this check here that we're going to present to you, and it's only up to you and your husband if y'all want to let someone know how much it is. But I'm sure it's enough to cover any flight you want to take anywhere, uh, as well as a cruise if you do decide to do it. And I'm presenting this on behalf of your former students. Thank you. Thank you all very much. To Dr. Carmen Walter, President of Tougaloo College, the Board of Trustees, the administration, faculty, and staff, present students, alumni, friends of the Tougaloo College family, and all students that I have taught over the 52 years my tenure. I want to speak to all of you. In 1963, President George Owens hired me to teach health and physical education. And in 1958, Dr. J. Herman Blake asked me to be on the court. President Owens asked me to be in the classroom, and the classroom meant that we would be outside and inside. I mostly preferred outside. So we had outside classes, and we went inside for basketball, volleyball, and, uh, uh, and we went outside for every other sport. I taught uh, physical education, uh, and, and I taught basketball and volleyball and soccer and, and uh, uh, archery, but I taught all of those things that I thought would aid my students. We had a chance to tell you, the, 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 the uh, department chairperson gave us a chance to tell you what we wanted to teach. And these things are what I taught. I wanted you to be healthy people. Now, J. Herman Blake gave me the court. He asked me to be his athletic director, and he also asked me in 1958 to, in 1956, to run the basketball team. I have some of the uh, students who played on my basketball team. Would you stand up, please? Those students that played on my basketball team. <laughs> President Blake took a chance in offering me the job as athletic director simply because I am a woman. That was a few years after Title IX of the Education Amendment Act of 1972 was mandated. Title IX stated that no person in the United States on the basis of sex would be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefit of, or be subject to discrimination at any educational program or activity receiving federal aid. So anybody who, any uh, organization that 
receives federal aid from them. If you didn't allow women to participate, then you were out. You could not get at, uh, a, a federal funds. It required that women and men be provided equally. And there was a great difference between 75 people on a football team and 25 people on, on the uh, basketball team. But he said, we will not even think about the sports, the sport of, of football and all of the people that it required, just as long as we require some sport for the females. He also said that you got to give scholarships to female just as you gave scholarships to the male. He said that tutoring, practice time, travel, and daily allowances, training for sports activities would be the same for women as they were for men. In 1984, the NCAA and others challenged Title IX and filed a suit with the Supreme Court. They wanted uh, uh, all of us to have federal aid and all of us to be educated, but they wanted to leave out athletics. They didn't want athletics. Well, when President Ronald Reagan became president, and, and they, loved, they won their case, but when President Ronald Reagan became president, he reserved the right to make a decision to have uh, the Title IX be just as it was mandated in 1972. So everybody had to uh, uh, reply to that. Now, even today, Title IX has trouble because somebody is back there trying to get us to don't let us uh, let women participate or don't give that money to women. Now, if you remember one thing, there was a, an athletic dumb for men, men. So all of this was cut out because there was no woman, no uh, activities no, no uh, facility for women. So uh, they cut out these uh, dormitories for men and so forth and so on. Now, in, seven, in 1952, I played basketball for Tudor Prep. That was the high school. Um, and I might say, we had a male team also and my husband played on that male team. <laughs> but I, <laughs> there were three women, this is to the young ladies on the, on the basketball team. There were six women on the court, three guards and three forwards. But you could not cross the center line, so the, the, the guard stayed on this side, and the forward stayed on this side, and vice versa for the opponent. Now, in order to tie a ball, we had to put two hands on the ball, and that was a regulated tie. And what was so interesting is that you could only dribble twice, and then you either pass the ball to someone or you shot the ball. So. That was basketball. That was, that was in high school. Now, in 1953, they decided they would use the roving guard. That is a person who could go across the center line, and come back across the center line. I was one of those persons. I was a roving guard because I was good. <laughs> Fifty uh, 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 organizations that had rules and regulations for sports. So your school or your district or your state chose one of the 150, I'm sorry, one of the 50 uh, organizations and they used their rules and regulations. There was no one 
making rules and regulations, no one person making rules and regulations for uh, sports. But now you have what, the NCAA, and it's doing that job. Now at Tougaloo College, Tougaloo Southern Christian College, at that particular time, there was a physical education teacher, and that was about the beginning of 1950s. There was a physical education teacher, her name was Miss Mary Robinson, who coached women's basketball. It was the only sport in women's activities. In the early 80s, uh, the women's basketball program began at Tougaloo College. In the early 80s, uh, began at Tougaloo College. This meant that Tougaloo College was going to have a, a, a women's sports program. And from that day on, we had, uh, we have women's sports and uh, we have added something to the, sports and pro the sporting program that we have. In 2020, the women's athletic program at Tougaloo College includes basketball, volleyball, women's cross country, tennis, and we're gonna have the addition of soccer and flag football in the 2022 2023 school term. <laughs> Our athletic director, Mr. Keith Barnes, that you just met, will carry this program to its peak performance. Remember that. And we, all of us, all of us, have helped him with this progress. I thank you for your financial help and generosity in preparing us for this program. Keith, it's all left up to you. Thank you. <laughs> from the classroom to the court. That just keeps ringing a bell in my head, from the classroom to the court. Give Ms. Williams another round of applause. <laughs> Ms. Williams, you have some company in here today. <laughs> At this time, I would like to invite President Walters to share some closing remarks. Good evening, everyone. Let me begin by thanking you for coming out in spite of COVID, the water crisis, and the flood. And many of you may be looking at your phones, checking your backyards to see if you're flooding. I know I have some employees uh, who's doing that tonight, so my heart is with you for all of these tragic events that's happening here in Jackson. But tonight we were able to lift our hearts and focus on something that's so important, the legacy of a great woman, Professor Norma Williams. Before I begin my remarks, I want to recognize all of our students who are here tonight with us. If you're in the room, please stand so we can give you a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for choosing Tougaloo College. The road from Tougaloo will take you anywhere you want to go. I'm gonna ask all alumni in the house to please stand. I know we have many. Let me see you. Look at this room. Beautiful. Thank you to all of you who are here tonight. I know this was a special night for you as well. 
And then um, we want to thank all of you, our guests and friends of Tougaloo College. I meet people every day. If they did not attend Tougaloo College, they know someone who did, their child, their aunt, their uncle. Tougaloo is the biggest, smallest college in the world. And so thank you for being here. Give yourselves a round of applause. And I want to say that um, it's the 50th year of Title IX, but it is also the 50th year of the Pell Grant. Anybody familiar with the Pell Grant? You went to school on the Pell Grant? 50 years ago, the Pell Grant paid for 75% of state tuition. Today, the Pell Grant pays less than 30% of state tuition. Not private, state tuition. So there is a gap. And our students, people who look like me, are suffering the most because of the gap. So when we decide to have a fundraiser for our students, there is a need. And so when you decided to shell out a dollar tonight, shell out $20, write that check, you made an important decision to change the trajectory of a student's life. Because as I said in the video, a ball in my hand is just a ball. But a ball in their hand is their way up and their way out, and you just reached your hand out to theirs to say, I am here to help you. So give yourselves a round of applause. I learned something this week talking to Ms. Williams. She said to me, I lived most of my life at Tougaloo College. She said, you know that little house over there where Ms. Valvia Wilson is? She said, I was raised in that house. And I thought about the plans for Tougaloo that I inherited and that I am enforcing. This work was done by others. I'm just carrying it along. It calls for the demolition of that house. Because that house is in bad, bad shape. We are getting ready to move people out of that house. Those of you who are old enough, you know that song your grandmother used to sing, this old building keep on leaning and my soul has got to move. We, we got to move people out of that house. And so the plans call for that house to be torn down. So when she was talking to the students and pouring into them, and they were sitting on the edge of their seats, listening to everything she said, I was listening to. And she said, I was raised in that house. And I looked at Keith and I said, oh my God, I can't tear down that house. So now, I got a raise $300,000 to renovate that house. And I know there are some people in here you haven't given in a long time. You're still riding on the fact that you gave Tougaloo a check under George Owens. You don't even, you skipped Dr. Hogan's era and you know, you, you finished, you did your thing. But I'm challenging you tonight to give a gift for that house in the name of Norma Williams. When you talked about her tonight, 
her legacy will live on forever. And when we renovate that house and put that plaque inside that room that says, in honor of the legacy of Professor Williams, your name, your name, your name, your name, your name could be listed on the plaque and listed in perpetuity at Tougaloo College, tied to the legacy of the great Norma Williams. I just want you to think about that. Just think about that. What a difference you could make. And so I've decided tonight to go back to the architect to say, let's change the plans. We, we can't tear down. We can't tear down that. We got to go back to the plans. This is why it's important, as I said to our students the other night, the purpose for you sitting in the room with this woman was to sit at her feet and to allow her to pour into you. And as she poured into you, she poured into me. Mama, we going to renovate your house. I want to thank all of you, all of the supporters who has generously, generously donated to this event tonight. When I looked at the list of all the names who had given, as I often do with Ms. Hodge, I said, my name needs to be on the list. I was taught very early to be the first partaker. How can I, Reverend Carter, ask you to give if I am not giving. And so it's important that we all be partakers in this. As we bring this wonderful night to a close, I want you to know your gifts matter. Every nickel, every dime. When we go out to raise money, they don't ask us how much our alums give. They want to know how many. So if you are an alum tonight, we want you to give, whether it's a dollar, whether it's a dime. We need the percentage of donors to go up, those of you who are alums. I know that Mrs. Williams has made a great impact on you. You have proven that. And I'm excited tonight to say your attendance alone has proven that. We appreciate every investment that everyone has made. So let me say, Mrs. Williams, to you and your family, to your husband, and I just want to say it was my pleasure to stand and watch Mrs. Williams' husband talk about her. She made a speech, and he looked at me, and he said, isn't she wonderful? I said, yes, she is. And then a few minutes later, we were out on the deck, and she was taking pictures, and he said, isn't she beautiful? And I was like, oh, my God, he's the prince. <laughs> I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it all the sponsors, the silent auction sponsors, to our board of trustees, to our cabinet members. I'd like the executive cabinet to please stand wherever, yeah, there you are, stand. I want to thank you, Dr. Chamberlain, and thank you. Let's give the, the executive cabinet a hand. <laughs> Dr. Chamberlain is our historian. She's also the Vice President for Social Justice and Strategic Initiatives. And we were talking about the fundraiser tonight. And yes, Joe had called me uh, earlier to say, you know, y'all need to, you know, Joe acts like he's all nice, but he's not. He, <laughs> he called me, y'all need to be doing something from this realness. I'm like, can you give us time, Jesus? Like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, sir, yes, sir. 
So we were meeting about the fundraiser, and then Dr. Um, Chamberlain so eloquently stated, I really think we need to be honoring Ms. Williams for all the contributions she's made. She's been here over 50 years, and she was ready to do her dissertation, Ms. Williams. And we were like, we know, we're doing it. <laughs> so thank you for speaking up. That's why we have you on the team. To our Tougaloo College National Alumni Association, I know we have some members in here. To the Tougaloo College Athletic Booster Club, Jana, love the hair. Thank you so much. Our student athletes, I know you're here, Tougaloo College student athletes. And um, to all of our partners, alumni and friends, and I'm going to say they have down here the Department of Athletics, but I like to say the winner's circle. Will the winner's circle please stand, all the coaches and managers who work with the Department of Athletics? That's the winner's circle right there. Don't they look good? And we want you to support them. They are doing a fantastic job. And then Ms. Hodge and, and Ms. Lindsay, the entire Division of Institution Advancement and your team, please stand. Thank you for planning this spectacular event to honor Ms. Williams. I see you back there, Ms. Doris. Thank you. Office of Communications and External Relations under the direction of Dr. Whitney McDowell Robinson, thank you. To the program participants, all of our students, weren't they fabulous? They are fabulous. Dr. Carl Twiner uh, is responsible for the ensemble. To Thompson Hospitality, the documentary production team, I don't know how to say their name. This is a young company, a startup company. Someone who was reviewing the video said, I think the video is a little long. And I said, well, how short can I make a video for someone who's worked over 50 years? Yeah, I mean, I can't, can't compact that anymore. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. You will have a copy. Audio, video, and sound production team, Mr. Moore and your team, thank you for always Moore and Salone, thank you so much for always being here. And then I want to say, I am absolutely honored to have participated in honoring you tonight. This was one of the highlights of this year, and I know we're going to go even further. Every time I see that patch, I'm going to have a leap of joy in my heart. Thank you, darling. So this concludes tonight's program. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your mistress of ceremony, and thank you all for coming out tonight to celebrate the trailblazer, Miss Norma Williams.